Under the topic transpiration, now we are going to discuss about stomatal apparatus. Now, why do we study stomatal apparatus over here? The reason is that as much as 50 to 97 percent of total transpiration that takes place by the plant is taking place through stomata and we term it as stomatal transpiration. Now, try to recall your understanding from the topic dicot and monocot leaf where we discussed that the lower epidermis and the upper epidermis they had certain specialized epidermal cells which were known as guard cells and the entire stomatal apparatus which was responsible for exchange of gases. Now in the case of stomatal transpiration the exchange of water vapors the water vapors that are to be exchanged between the leaf and the atmosphere is going to take place through the stomatal apparatus which is something like this two kidney shaped cells are placed close to each other so this exchange has to take place through the stomatal pores so that is why we discuss about the stomatal apparatus because the water vapor as much as 97 percent of the water vapors are lost from the foliar transpiration. Foliar transpiration means the transpiration that takes place through the leaves. So we have stomatal transpiration that is the main role player in the process of transpiration inside the plants with abundant foliage and we have to talk about the region from where this transpiration takes place. Now if we are talking about a dicot leaf you know that there is a palisade parenchyma and there is spongy parenchyma and in the lower surface we are having stomatas and in the case of monocot leaves we have upper and lower epidermis both abundant in stomatas and there are uh, two types of uh, stomatal apertures or you can say the guard cells one is uh, a dorsi ventral type of leaf which has the stomata present in the lower surface and isobilateral type of leaves dorsi ventrals are kidney shaped kidney bean shaped and the one which are isobilateral they are dumbbell shaped all right i hope you can recall your understanding if you cannot we have a well dedicated lesson to this particular topic which shows that what a stomatal apparatus looks like first of all this is uh, the part of epidermal tissue system so you are going to find that the epidermal cells of the leaves upper and lower both they are modified they are modified in the shape the main role that the the main role which the cells play are the guard cells they are kidney shaped cells this is their thicker side see this is a guard cell which would be surrounded by subsidiary cells on its side all are modifications of epidermis only this is a subsidiary cell which is surrounding a guard cell and this entire arrangement where we have these ones as subsidiary cells these ones being guard cells and this being the stomatal aperture you need to memorize this diagram from exam point of view stomatal aperture these all things they make stomatal apparatus okay This is all what is present in stomatal apparatus and certainly this is part of epidermis. We have subsidiary cells, we have guard cells, pair of guard cells, guard cell number one, guard cell number two. Both these cells, they have a thick wall as well as a thin wall. This is the thick wall that is present inside where the stomatal aperture or the stomatal pore is present. To that side, we have a thick wall and towards the outer side, we have a thin wall. 
as you can see the shape resembles that of a kidney bean with one region having a thick wall and thin wall now what happens is this cloma uh, this uh, stomata has a mechanism that closes and opens this particular stomatal aperture now how does it occur there are cellulosic microfilaments which are present inside the stomata and they are arranged like this now they are elastic what happens is that this guard cell it becomes turgid because this is a thick wall it inflates itself like this and it pushes it out okay pushes the thin wall out when the cell would go flaccid it is going to become closed so through the stomatal apparatus the closing and opening of stomata is regulated of course depending upon the rate of transpiration and the turgidity of the cells this uh, regulation takes place that how much the guard cell is going to remain turgid and how much it is going to remain flaccid and the transpiration is being carried out so the closing and opening of stomata in a way regulates the rate of transpiration most of the times you are going to observe that the stomata remain closed during the night and they are open in the daytime so we are going to observe what is the physiological mechanism behind this closing and opening because certainly there would be some sort of osmosis or some other activity which would be taking place because it is the concern of turgidity over here we are talking about turgidity and when we talk about turgidity it has something to do with solvent and solute concept so we have a proper mechanism which tells us how this opening and closing of stomata takes place now over here as you can see the guard cells are of kidney bean shape so we have discussed the a uh, dorsi ventral type of stomatal aperture now considering this to be a monocot stomatal apparatus it would be little bit different the cell would be dumbbell shaped something like this okay and over here the thicker side same way it would be towards mm -hmm. inner side but the thick walls are present towards both the sides this is the thicker wall and the stomatal apparatus this is the stomatal pore and this entire is the stomatal aperture again we have not this big it would be the guard subsidiary cells would be surrounding it like this this is the subsidiary cell arrangement our prime concern is for the guard cells which is represented like this over here also we have cellulosic microfilaments which are responsible for opening and closing of stomata these are dumbbell shaped the earlier ones were kidney bean shaped and the stomatal apparatus has a great role to play in the process of transpiration because ultimately the stomatal apparatus provides the aperture through which the exchange of water vapor has to take place moreover these stomatal apparatus are regulated by the changes in their turgor pressure and turgidity and their opening and closing takes place according to the time in which they are prescribed to open so mostly in the leaves it is the stomata that stays open in the day and it closes at the night so something is regulating their opening and closing there are certain other factors also which are responsible for opening and closing of stomata so we're going to see that one by one firstly we are going to see in next lesson that what is the mechanism behind closing and opening of stomata so i would introduce to introduce to you that particular term here only in this lesson just an introduction that we have a potassium malate pump theory that is responsible for opening and closing of stomata potassium malate pump theory this would be the theory which would be responsible for opening and closing of stomata and as you can see because we are dealing with potassium ions we are dealing with malate this has something to do with the osmotic pressure and osmolarity of the cells and in that way we are going to see how the turgor is going to be regulated remember this name and get prepared for understanding what it is in the next lesson